I wanted to bring you on the show today uh, to talk Target. And uh, thank you for bringing the company back on my radar, by the way. Because frankly, if you'd have told me that at the beginning of 2018, Target would end up being in the top 50 best performing stocks in the S&P 500 this year, I, I don't <laughs> think I would have believed you, frankly. But here we are in October, and Target is indeed in the top 10% of gainers in that index, with shares up 31% year to date. Um, the last couple times, Target has come up on the show. Uh, we talked about the turnaround plan that management launched in early 2017. Um, there were some encouraging initial results from that effort uh, as of the late summer last year. So think about things like smaller store formats, uh, they're remodeling existing locations, there's digital growth. So these are all themes from last show. But most importantly, uh, management has really wanted to take back market share and they've become more willing to compete on price in order to do so. And also just think out of the box. Um, so after the second quarter results target released back in August, I think a lot of the even the biggest skeptics really have to acknowledge that the chain is kind of gaining some momentum. So we're going to cover a lot of different uh, Investments that Target's leadership has been making uh, to contribute to the strong results, but I'll let you start, Dan. What kind of stuff has impressed you the most? Well, really, it's that Target could have just sort of made some minor changes. They could have improved delivery, spruced up the stores, tweaked the merchandise, kind of just stuck with what was already sort of working. It wasn't. It wasn't the disaster that some of these retailers are, and instead, they really blew everything up. You know, if you walk into your average Target, they're not done with the remodels. They're about a third of the way through. But if you go into a remodeled Target, they've changed everything. The way the that you flow through the store, the way merchandise is. If you're in a, a more urban in location like things like snacks are in the front there's multiple entrances you know so they took something and instead of just going okay how do we get it a little bit better they really took a big risk they changed a lot of their merchandise and they made all the changes that you don't see. They invested a lot of money in supply chain and making sure they have the right merchandise in their stores. And that's really all paying off. They put up the, the best comp sales numbers they've had in, in I want to say, eight, nine years. Uh, their traffic was up uh, six point something percent. It's really been a, you know, a, a turnaround that sort of all came together in the last quarter or two. Yeah, I will jump into those numbers a little bit. So we're talking about foot tra foot traffic growth here of 6.4%. So that's the highest level of growth recorded since 2008. And then on top of that, the year over year comparable sales growth was 6.5%. That's the highest level since 2005. So like you said, pretty impressive. And breaking that down, um, the physical stores contributed contributed 4.9% of that comms boost and then with the remaining 1.5% or so coming from e-commerce and e-commerce specifically uh, digital growth came in at 41% which is an acceleration from both the first quarter of this year and then from the prior year quarter um, both of those came in closer to 30%. So it does seem like uh, CEO Brian Cornell and the rest of the leadership team, they're taking this more holistic approach to the turnaround that they've implemented. Um, and they're still experimenting with a lot of things, like the smaller format stores. Uh, 12 of them were open in the first half of 2018. And COO John Mulligan, he said during the last earnings call, as quote, these locations deliver high sales productivity along with gross margin rates above the company average. And we continue to see strong growth as these stores mature. At the end of the second quarter, we are operating 20 26 mature small format stores, and on average, this group saw high single digit comp growth during the quarter. So, again, kind of feeding into that, though at this point, still a very small base, right? Yeah. And when you look at it on the back end side, they made all the same moves Walmart did. You know, you can order online, pick up in store, there's multiple delivery options. It's really about Giving the customers what they want and and where they want it and how they want it. You know, if you look at their website, it's not a total overhaul, but they really dug in on taking steps out of the process, automating things like subscriptions, just making it very very easy to shop there. And you have to do that when your competitor is Amazon, which is about the easiest place to shop there is. Yeah, and on the supply chain side, I was looking for some uh, more specific detail and guidance in terms of what they're doing there. It seems um, the. Uh, as much as I could glean from their from the management comments, they're trying to handle a lot of the new the digital fulfillment from the growth in that channel, of course. Um, but they're also trying to improve things like the in-store functions, like how they offload inventory from the trucks, uh, some of the shelf stocking process, and also how uh, they staff employees in different departments of the store. To overall, it seems they're really trying to focus on improving the guest experience, um, to give better service, have fewer out-of-stock items uh, on shelves, uh, or not on shelves, right? And right. It 
Go, go ahead. It, it's a work in progress. So I am a three or four times a week Target visitor, sometimes because it's too hot here to take a walk outside. So I'll use Target as my sort of indoor walking space. I know that makes me sound a thousand years old. Uh, but they've done better in that on the big ticket items, you won't find them running out of, say, one flavor of cereal from a popular brand. Where they still struggle a bit is on some of the smaller companies. Like They stock uh, a type of canned coffee I like, and they sort of run out of it before they bring it all back in. So, there's absolutely still little hiccups in it, but it's gotten much better. And your ability to walk up to an associate and say, hey, I usually buy this. How do I order it online? Or how do I get it sent here to this store, the level of training, in my personal experience, is very high for the individual associate to be able to help you with that. Yeah, management talking has been talking a lot about uh, improvements to training to uh, help customers with issues like what you just mentioned.